All right, welcome to Thousand Year Home. So it's it's evening time here. Let me a sunset. Hank is eating his evening oats and alpha alpha. But I got a little daylight, so I've decided to uh, continue working on the uh, on the windows. So uh, as you have seen maybe in other videos, they are not watertight. They are not watertight because I'm doing something different. Uh, I'm not welding frames around it for reinforcement. Now, I'm doing that mostly because I'm in a stage five fire hazard out here in Bastrop County. And some of the largest wildfires in Texas have been right here in this county. So it's ingrained in me to be safe and conscious. So. Well, this um, method that I'm using, uh, you'll see that I'm cutting some angles in these uh, four by fours. These are going to be the uprights. Um, this is uh, following the contour of the corrugated steel. This is something people can duplicate who maybe can't, like me, uh, weld outside of um, in the bush. So uh, all I'm doing is just cutting the corrugated line out so that this will sit flush and strong against the side. I'm really shooting for uh, like a, a gasket type seal. So I pull this all the way through and uh, turn off my saw blade and pretty happy with that. So uh, what I did is I was real careful when I laid these out to cut them at the same place on the corrugation. Do not pick one in and one out to cut and put a window in. You you move the window a little bit so you're cutting the exact same wave. And that's why the this works. I cut one and then I could use that on the other side. I did that all the way around. I made no mistakes. Now, this 4x4 has a twist in it, and this twist is causing me problems. And it'll cause me problems later on during assembly. So I should have put it back and got a straighter um, 4x4. You'll see there that at first my uh, saw blade misses at the very start <clears throat> because of the, uh, the twist. Later on, it, it falls through the, um, uh, while I'm bracing it up and drilling it out, it causes me problems again. Uh, yeah, so I should have put this one back. But I push it all the way through. I'm watching my fingers. I don't want to get hurt. Um, being careful to kick back while I'm doing it. Not the best way, right, for, for doing this. I should have put in my splitter on the saw. That would have helped a little bit for that angle. But there we go. You'll see that those um, there's two perfectly cut 4x4s that match the corrugation perfectly on the... Uh, the connex, and then I'll take them and I'll bolt them right up to that window. Uh, and uh, that window that I picked is the one that's leaking the most. So <laughs> this is the one I'm I'm mostly interested in. So what I'm doing is gathering my uh, clamps and, uh, you know, I just hoisted, a, hoisted up there and uh, eyeball straight and uh, clamp it in. And I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the results of this. Um, and uh, later I'll put another clamp on there. And uh, later I'll put a, uh, I'll start drilling these out and measuring them up. So I'm getting the other one. And uh, again, that twist on this one uh, is nothing but trouble for me all the time. It was trouble to run it through the sawmill. And here it's being trouble for me. Of course, I can't run straight. And um, it doesn't hold as tight and snugly as the first one, even though it's a, uh, uh, theoretically a copy. So once I was done with that, I have to think about the sill plate. And I have an idea for um, using a port epoxy resin on the, the sill plate to give it a, uh, a flexibility. So I'm, I'm looking at a 4x4. Four four, I'm looking at a 2x4. How will I uh, come off the sill plate and cover it up? Ultimately, what I've decided to do is take the 4x4 four four, uh, because it sticks out a little bit because the other ones have a bevel. And I'll come out a couple inches on each side, and then I'll, I'll cut a notch in it. And then I'll screw it in that direction. Um, I'm trying to hide as many screw points as possible. Uh, where I do, I'll ultimately end up drilling the, tapping and drilling the holes for mounting these 4x4s. You won't see it because the sill plate will be across that. So real pleased. And, and lastly, if I decided I needed some quarter round or something like that. I'm just double checking that. Um, but I don't think I need it. I, I'm just saying if it looks 
terrible and unprofessional. It, it doesn't. It would get by. Thumbs up. I feel pretty good about this design. So the next step for me then is to get in there and actually uh, drill. And you'll see I'm putting in the drill um, ever so slightly beveled up. So the frame does get on that screw. It's not going to just follow it straight into the house. It would have to go uphill to do so. And then I countersink it a little bit, and then I bring in these construction uh, five and a half or six inch construction screws and run them in with the Torx head. And you look how it tightened up that gasket. It just drew that whole um, protect wrap just real tight against the, uh, the wall of the container. And now I know that won't leak. Uh, ultimately, I'll shoot some, um, on both sides, I'll shoot some caulk. Now, this one, as you watch, um, I run into a problem here um, right away with this. See uh, that shift? It shifted over, and uh, that shift is because it's twisted. And uh, I guess I need to put a, lot, a boatload of clamps. And now the struggle starts, and it is real. And um, all, and in the middle of all of this, I find out that I've got the wrong size Torx head, uh, and I just stripped that one out. I just stripped that one out. The the rage <laughs> as I do this in the heat, and it is way after five o'clock. It is sunset, uh, even though it looks like it's midday here. Uh, well, I think it's sunset. I don't know. I work all day long. So, uh, but the, I remember the heat was just so phenomenal that this was uh, really very, very stressing for me. Ultimately, I had to undo the clamp and I had to throw that uh, fastener away. I had to go get my tape measure and remeasure all of this. So, um, my advice is definitely don't use twisted ones. Uh, use ones that are straight uh, if you can. And if you do have twisted ones, you're going to have to put more than two clamps on like I did. Uh, I really needed to put a uh, uh, hand clamp that I could tighten down. Uh, I guess the sixth time is the charm. So I finally get it uh, uh, with this run out. Oh, no, no, no. This is where I find out I've got the, the stripped head. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had to go get a new fastener and come back. And uh, that scream of victory scream was surreal. So... Now I got to go up and, and uh, do them up top, which is even more difficult because I'm on a ladder and uh, running the, uh, the torque was, was very difficult. But I was more braced for, uh, for this moving around and I was more careful uh, to keep my eye on what the top would do. Uh, and this will be hidden by the header. So it still jumped a little bit there, but not much did it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Nice and tight again. This is something people can do who don't have access to a lot of steel and welders. And uh, so what I've done here is uh, sandwiched the container between two four by fours. I got one here and then I've got one there and I'm working on the water tightness. So uh, I ordered caulk that's in uh, brown, brown caulk, large gap. So I'll chase that. And right now I'm going to make the header and the header will be supporting uh, earth bag, one or two, and then there'll be a crown, probably just one, probably just one. And then there'll be a, a concrete crown that will uh, tie all the uh, sandbags together, all the earth bags together. And um, also then I will pour a uh, roof on top of the connex. So, but this evening, I think I have enough time to pick out the, uh, the six by six that I need for the header and cut it down. And then I'll put it on top of the uh, the two posts there, and I'll I'll etch in where I want it to drop down, and then I'll route out uh, probably an inch and a half, maybe two. I'm going to measure so that I can put a piece underneath and water water tight, water seal the top, and that way the water will run off. And then on the very top, temporarily, I'm just going to put some. Uh, metal tape uh, aluminum tape that will shoo away the water off the roof and make it run here and there and then the sill well the bottom sill needs some thought because uh what will happen is the rain will run down and it will find these little openings and um, make my life miserable by sending water in to be a thousand year home I cannot have a single drink zero leakage zero I have to have zero <laughs> leakage 
And I didn't weld the metal frame around. And I, I'm envious. I'm envious of those who have. It would make this process a lot easier. But I am doing something unique. And also this will be beautiful. I'll end up staining that a cedar stain. So, uh, and it'll look awesome. So those posts are actually ground contact capable post that I'm using. So I want the, and I'll stain them when I'm done. I want the next person to never, ever, ever have to mess with these. I want them to last a thousand years. So here I am off to go get my six by six from the pile and they're six by six by 10 feet. So they're, I looked it up. They're 78, uh, 79 pounds, 80 pounds, depending how wet. And uh, so my, uh, I let my little grandson uh, knock this tree down, and he did such a good job all by himself, you know, running the backhoe. So I got to fold it up before I uh, could drive through the scrub brush to get my uh, six by six. I'm getting scratched to heck by the cedars, and uh, it really did bite me to do this little, little drawing. Well, that's how I get all scratched up. <laughs> Going through. <laughs> the branches got me a little bit while I was going through all of that. <laughs> you know, <I'll... laughs> eventually I get in there and cut more fire break, but I, I have to build a house and I'm running out of running out of time to be at an honesty. I've gotta get heat in there and so I've got my mini split sitting there waiting. Oh, oh yeah, the uh the tractor's like my uh, my hired help, <laughs> so I do really rely on this tractor for quite a bit. So uh, these um, six by sixes and four by fours, I've had sitting here for a little while, specifically for the headers. And uh, I did pick out the straightest one for the header, and I'm glad I did. I took got punished by getting a little twisted four by four. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is just beat the sunset, and uh, I know I'm not going to get this work done done tonight, so this particular video is like a part one. So I'm just looking at what the extension is for my 6x6, uh, six six, and I'm being careful that I don't want to poke a pork truck through right, a window. I wanted to see how, uh, how high that could go and how far I'll be lifting it, and of course I'll cut it down to fit here in just a minute, but... I'm going to have a couple, uh, three feet to pick it up, more or less. This was something that I wanted to do, to use the fork trucks to check anyway, uh, because I'll be using it for sandbags. So now I've lowered it down. I'm using the fork truck as a work surface. Uh, marked a foot on each side of that header um, of those uprights so that the header will stick out a foot on each side. And uh, then I take that... Um, little tiny rogue. I've got two chainsaws, electric chainsaws. I really enjoy them. Uh, real powerful animals. Uh, I use this one for exactly this uh, in timber framing inside the Connex. So uh, it just, just chops right through. And uh, again, I'm not doing fine cra uh, craftsmanship. I'm shooting for that whole method. So here's my idea. Rather than get it way up there where it'll hurt me, I'm going to see if the bottom is the same dimension as the top or if they go out a little bit. If they go out a little bit, I'll mark it and then I'll uh, I'll just route it down here with the hopes that I get it within dropping distance up there. I think maybe I can get do that. We'll find out. I will for sure if they're the same dimension. Now, I eyeballed straight. So eyeballing straight doesn't mean straight, right? Yeah, that's Spanish Mission 5. I don't have to be perfect, but that, that twisted beam comes back to haunt me right here. Uh. <laughs> All right, that idea didn't work. The, uh, they're splayed out a little bit, and this one has a slight twist. So it goes not just straight, but the wood itself has a little twist in it. So uh, I wouldn't be able to route that, I'd be guessing. And I'd have to flip it right side up from going from the bottom to the top and uh, so my idea of doing it safely on the ground uh, is it gonna work so I'm uh, running out of daylight uh, on this project but I I have the length cut I uh, loaded up on the forks I never saw how far the forks would get me up but level up is uh, let me wrote as you saw level up is uh, right at the midpoint of the window so I can get it that high 
but I still have three feet to lift it. Now, I cut it in half, so it's probably half the weight. I don't know what a, a treated uh, six by six is, but uh, tonight I'm tired. It felt like it was a thousand pounds, so um, I'm going to call it an evening. So from the midpoint that I can go, I need to get it up another few feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put clamps here. And I'm going to uh, put a quick clamp there. But anyway, the clamp's here so that I can get that. I can tilt the thing fork truck up. And that will give me another 18 inches. From there, I think I can muscle it up and get it on the top. I need to scribe it and then route it. And um, I think some clamps up there might help me with all of that. If I put a couple of clamps in there. Well, I would say in the comments, tell me how to do it. The other idea I had was just to put a uh, lag bolt, eye bolts in it and throw a rope over it and psh, uh, pull it up that way uh, and tie it off on the other side. I like that idea too. All right, but this is uh, Steve at Thousand Years Homes. And notice I just said, this is Steve. I didn't say this is my company. So it's just me. So I have to be careful whichever way I decide to put that up and uh, putting a hundred pounds of, of solid, oh, oh, uh, you know, treated lumber above my head is, uh, is a kill shot if I'm not careful. So I'm too tired to do that today. I spent all day working uh, and uh, the no, no rain is in the forecast for the next week. So I will spend the next week doing each and every one of these outside windows the same way I did this one and uh, chase them all through. And then I expect them not to uh, leak at all. Uh, I'll caulk them so they will not leak. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate the company. It makes me feel good when I have likes and subscribes uh, uh, because it is quiet out here. Is it? All right. So I'm going to have to put my fork trucks down. Uh, they, they won't hold pressure all night long. Nice and quiet. Thanks much, y'all.